Good afternoon, everyone. It's Chrissy from Solstice ATR. You can find me on the website, Twitter, Instagram, as well as Discord. You can DM me. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Um, we use this for technical trading and adaptive. We are not a broker dealer. Past performance doesn't indicate future results. Use at your own risk. And if you need to copy the data, please check the website policy for permission. Let's first break it down by taking a look at different instruments at all at the same time with what the outlook is for the coming week in the stock market. There's a couple of things we need to cover. Number one, that pullback that we had down here. Is it sustainable to take the market to an annual high by end of the year? Is the stock market technicals, the tech, the growth, consumers, products, staples, commodities, financial, uh, um, as well as consumer, manufacturing, energy, oil prices, and the home builders are going to keep this market up? The only three concerns we have to be concerned about is inflation cost of goods and the ports being, you know, slow to distribute all the products because there's a shortage in trucking companies to take the freights from one point to the other. Geopolitical as well as the, in the global markets. We'll give an example between Taiwan and Asia, China. The depth ceiling, which is, you know, they take the can down the tube, as well as the tapering of the Federal Reserve Board if there's going to be a slowdown and start taking money at a, the banking sector as well as, you know, the financing sector. Let's break it down one by one by looking at the other instruments. And here I put the combination of the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell, and the Dow. Right up here we had an, a head. This was the shoulder. We created a shoulder. I do not, I'm not sure if this is going to be an inverted head and shoulder to continue higher or we get consolidation and get around the bottom here coming to retest this gap. If I zoom in here, we have recovered the 18 simple moving average. We recovered the 50 simple moving average. I do not use an 89 EMA, but some people do. I put it there. I use a 116 simple moving average. We retested a couple of times here and eventually reversed back above. And here we still have the 200 SMA, which is down the bottom. On the daily chart, we missed the July low. Or we missed the June low. Does this mean we're going to continue higher or not? We have two little gaps in here. You can see in between this scandal and this scandal, we have another gap between this scandal and this scandal. Usually I mark them, but I leave them alone on the combination of the instruments so that way we can see them as well here. When we retested it, we fell through it and came back and cleared it. Similar situation here. When we retested it, we filled it on the way back up. So let's break it down one by one. We'll start first with the small cap, which is the RTY. And I'm going to use the regular ES mini RTY because I do have the monthly FIB. We've been consolidating since the January low of this year in February. You can see we've been range bound, have not been able to clear the March high. We tried to retest a couple of times, but couldn't make it. We are coming out of a symmetrical triangle. You can see this. On the small cap, we pushed up into the retracement of the monthly measured move Fibonacci and pulled back in a little bit. Does this mean we stay inside this range or do we reverse back to clear the monthly high expected move to continue higher? This is the weekly low and the weekly high for the five day range from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and this Friday. On Thursday, we had a professional gap up. This candle does not show it, but if I go in the overnight and I go dollar sign instead of going to daily, I go to a five-day daily range. You can see the overnight action happen here where we close at 2 p.m. and we reopen at uh 6 30 californian time or we close at 5 p.m east coast or we open at the 9 30 a.m east coast this is a professional gap in here i have left that 
as a marker so people know that we have this gap in case the Russell could not come back. Let's go back to the daily chart. We go nine months out. I'm going to go daily instead of yearly. We'll just do nine months so everybody can see what we're doing. When we come back, we can see that we are range bound. Okay, let's take a look at now the NASDAQ 100, the NQ. We can see in the NASDAQ 100, we came back and retested the July low and we filled one of these gaps here, but we did not fill this gap down here, which is in the overnight action. This is the May low, which we never retested. Let's zoom in this area from here and go to the right. We are reversing in a linear regression down channel. We eventually broke up on the weekly fit from high to low from Sunday through Friday. We tested the 50 simple moving average. We are between the 50, the 18 and the 50. We have a professional gap here. We filled this gap here, no longer valid, but I'll leave the word gap there. Remove the drawing, we'll keep the word gap, which you already filled no longer valid. I can actually take it off if I really want to, and I can just go remove no longer there. The weekly fib is now supposed to be here. We got to activate this, activate this drawing, which says the text, and move the weekly to here, which is the weekly high and low. I usually anchor them, but sometimes I don't have enough time. I just throw it out there and I reset it. So we anchored the fib from here to here. We are between these two lines. We have a gap here in the overnight action. We have to pay for it, pay attention to it. And at the same time, we are on the monthly Fibonacci expected measured move. The retest of that zero line is very important. It's like retesting the 50% of the Fib high and low between the June and July. I mean, between the September high and low. And we're coming back to that midpoint. If we clear the 50, look for the upside. If we come back and recreate a little small shoulder, pay attention to it on the NASDAQ 100. Let's take a look at the Dow Joe Industrial Average. We can see since the Dow Joe Industrial Average, we retested the July low, but never tested the June low. So we created a shoulder. This is the head of it. This is the other shell. It's a little higher and we pushed further away. On the weekly Fibonacci, we can see that the monthly, we cleared the 61A or the 38.2% and we cleared the 23 if you draw it reverse, if you draw from high to low or low to high, these would be inverted, those numbers. So we have cleared that, but we have on the weekly basis, the low here and the high here that happened on Wednesday. And we cleared the Monday high, and we cleared last week's uh, Thursday's high, and we pushed further up. This is the candle that brought us down. Pay attention if we continue higher to clear the monthly expected move to the high, or we consolidate to continue higher. We are above the 50 and the 18 simple moving average. We do have a similar gap on the weekly chart on YM. Let's take a look at the ES, but I'm going to do this a little bit differently on the ES. I want to show you the profile on it. Let's zoom down here. We retested the July low, <clears throat> but never came all the way down. And we uh, the August you know, low, we retested it here when we fell down on the expected move down. But we created a shoulder. This is the head of it. This is the shoulder. And we are pushing above the 50% measured move from high to low. If you take this high to this low, this is the expected 50%. But since the profile was higher, the expected move was higher. We had to move the FIBs a little further up where the 50 is. This is going to act a little bit as resistance coming to this area because this is the two candles that brought us down from the annual high that happened in September 3rd on the S&P 500. Let's go now to the monkey bars. Instead of standard, we go monkey bars. I compressed it to a 20 day, two hour chart. We can see we had consolidation and push higher. Then we consolidated for a wick. And in this range, we created a lot of reversal between back and forth. We pushed higher, fell back in the range. We double bottomed almost here and we pushed up. Does this mean we continue higher? If I go to the style in the setting, if I do one thing, I go to the futures and I, instead of using the extended hours and I push apply, you will see where the gaps are in relationship 
in the volume profile, not including the overnight high. There was a gap here. You can see it where we retested it. See it? We pushed up. We had this gap. We pushed into it, came back into the POCs, pushed higher. There's a gap here. And between here and here, we have another small gap. You can see it between the price volume low, which is the 44 uh, that 4,400, 4,445, 4, and the higher this one is uh, 4,437 quarters. So we have a gap here. We have a gap here between these two. So usually come to the style, pay attention to it in the monkey bars in the setting, put the futures on. If you want to highlight the gap and over the highlight the overnight, you can highlight it. If you don't want, you check it off. If you want, you check it on and you put the show extended hours, then we, we put the show extended hours, those gaps are usually filled in the overnight action. You can't see them. This is a way to understand where the gaps are in relationship if we gap up or if we gap down in the profile in relationship to the price action and the day before action. I'll go to style, go back to standard, and you can see that double bottom that happened on the daily chart couple of days. This is almost a double bottom here. And we reversed back to the mean after the Fed announcement. And since they they kind of gave a hint about the tapering, does it happen in November or December? We have to pay attention. Or do we get a Christmas rally into the market by end of the year? Let's take a look at now BTC. This is Bitcoin. We can see we had this gap here. I usually have it highlighted like here where the gaps are not visited. There's one right here has not been revisited. We had couple here on the push up. We revisited this annual high. We created a rounded bottom. This is the shoulder. This is the other shoulder. Does this mean we clear this high to continue? Because this candle actually filled the gap. If I put my mouse here, you can see that gap here is already filled in the profile in Bitcoin. We are away from the 18. The most important thing in Bitcoin, we have to pay attention to this level, and I want everyone to pay attention to it. Not the 58,900. I want to pay attention to 59, uh, 58,350 because this candle, that low and that very sharp push higher, gave us, you know, it consolidated for four days. It looked up and it broke in the trading hours where it broke this area and took it further high. If I go to the four hour chart, you will see that on the charts. Let's do this on a five day, four hour. This is the consolidation you can see. We looked up, we looked down in the range of the prior day, pushed higher, came back to retest part of that candle right here. We missed it. We got a small gap in this area. If I highlight it, it should be this one, not down here. If I want to redo this, edit, the, remove the drawing, we'll do this together so everybody understands what we're looking at. We highlight this candle, the low of it here, and we highlight this candle here. And we, not this, I'm sorry, this is the wrong one. I'm sorry. Remove drawing. I saw this wasn't during trading hours because the trading hours is here. So actually, it's this one. And that was correct from the beginning. So we get this candle here to this candle here. This is the gap that we have in the profile to continue higher. If we come back and retest it, I want to pay attention to that 58,300 as the line in the sand. If we're going to continue or not, we are away from the 18. We are away from the 50 on the four hour charts. Pay attention to what the charts offer you. Don't be biased to one side because your ADX RSI is getting a little bit extended on Bitcoin. It doesn't have to continue but it can but pay attention to the technicals. Let's take a look at the GC gold. Let's go back on gold. This is the look above a couple of days ago. We looked up and consolidated on Tuesday and eventually on Friday, we have a big large gap between the open and the price of it. This is a big gap in here. If you look at it, that's a major gap that gold did in the prior action from two days ago. That's a professional gap coming in when they sold off into it. Let's go to the daily chart. One year, push OK. We can do yearly, it's OK. We can see that we are still in a linear regression down channel 
trying to break up. It did it. It did an inverted. This is the head of it. This is the shoulder. Reverse back up. Came back down. Tried to look up to break the prior linear regression, but we can see from this point to this point we are still in a down channel. We can grab a channel and we connect those dots here from this high here to this low here, and we can see that we are still in a linear regression symmetrical triangle trying to create a shoulder. This is the head of it. If this is the shoulder and we can hold the 18 and reverse back, we look for the upside of the channel. If we fall through the 1747, be careful of gold. It may end up to be on the other side and pay attention to this channel here between this low here, 1678 and the 1721. If we end up holding this level and continuing higher or not in GC. Let's take a look at CL. We can see CL, it's on an annual high prices of gas on the pump, especially like the East Coast, New York, California, and the big cities are paying more, more on the pump for even the regular compared to the uh, premium or the super. Like the super, I fill my car for almost $4.90, $4.85 on the pump for a gallon of gas. In California, is it going to hit the five, six, seven dollars possibility? Pay attention to what the consumptions are and where we are in relationship to the price action. I know electrical cars, everybody's trying to push them, but where is the electricity coming? It's coming from coal, gas, and power plants. So prices of natural gas, prices of oil have risen higher because even when you go fill up an electric car, where is that coming off from? What grid? Okay. So let's go now taking a look at some ETFs, IEF. We start with the 7, 10-year bond. We can see it's falling down. We look at the IEI, which is the shorter 5 to 10-year. We can see similar situation in the price action. The interest rates are still lower. Let's take a look at the TLT, similar situation. That's the TLT, iShare 20-year treasury bond. We have to pay attention to the bond prices it in order to keep inflation lower. So let's take a look at XLK. That's the technology sector. We can see that we're getting a breakout in XLK. XLV is in the healthcare sector. And, uh, we can see it's trying to reverse back from the mean. We can take a look at the XLF. The financial sector is on an annual high. XLE, similar situation. XLP, we can see we're trying to come back. We filled the gap. We're still underneath the... 50 SMA, but we are between the 50 and the 18 simple moving. XL, uh, F, I don't think we did that. We did the F, I think, XL, E, we did XLF. I don't know if I did it or not. That's the financial sector, I believe we did. Take a look at the RSP, the overall majority exchange of the S&P equal weighted. We're trying to push back up. NYA. The New York composite, the overall market of the New York composite, it shows you that the market has been recovering. There's different sector rotations other than tech that are keeping this market up. We'll take a look at uh, one more SCHG. Uh, this is the gross large cap to Schwab. We can see it. And if we look at, uh, you know, because some of the equity stocks have been shorted, some of them are being long, we can take a look at ARK. K, which is the ARC investments, you can see it's down for the year from the February high. There's a lot of people are looking on her fund and the way she trades. I'm not saying anything, but you have to pay attention to what the overall markets and what other money managements are doing in relationship to the overall market. Let's take a look at AAPL. This is Apple. We can see Apple is trying to come back. To the very important area is the 151 area and the 148 area. In order to clear to continue, we are between the 18 and the 50 SMA. You can see it here between the 18 and the 50. This is very important. We're holding the 116 on the retest of that move down in Apple. Let's take a look at Amazon. Amazon did a nice, great job on the last four, uh, three days consolidation, you know, those two, three days consolidation and the breakout of the 3325 gave that push above the 50, coming back to that linear regression down channel. Does it consolidate to break up or does it fall to make another small shoulder here to continue higher? I like Amazon setup. Let's take a look at Facebook. 
I don't see much in Facebook, but I, I'll post it here. You can see uh, Facebook still in a down channel on the expected measure mood. It bounced off the 200 SMA. Does it hold or does it continue lower? Let's take a look at Google. We can see Google here. It uh, it consolidated for a little bit, fell down and broke above the 50 and the 18. This is very important to clear the 2250, 2850 in order to continue higher. Pay attention to it. Um, let's take a look at NFLX. Um, Netflix is uh, after the push high for the annual high this year. It's been consolidating range bound on Friday. It fell back in range. I did not anchor it because this five day range is almost in the prior week. This is an important candle that I have to pay attention to. And Netflix, let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla did a nice job on Friday pushing higher above that linear regression channel. Eventually, it pushed higher, pushed higher, pushed higher. It retested that 8798, 800 area. Eventually, once it pushed above the 810, off to the races, it's looking for the monthly expected move. You can see my monthly fit, but high actually is the September high and low. But you anchor it according to the time spent. We pushed a little bit higher. We come into the monthly fib extension which is the 161 or 61 extension on the upper level in test let's take a look at when when tried to push in the last four days tested the 50 sma has not been able to break through it tested it above and on friday it fell in we have to pay attention to that 88 area if it's going to hold or not to continue higher and break out of this symmetrical triangle or come back to the back side of the wedge MGM had a nice upgrade a couple of days ago. Oops, MGM. It gave it that little push, and we could said, hey, it was baselining the week before in our chat room. We said there was a baseline here. Pay attention for a break, and eventually, once it broke the $46, it pushed higher, and on Friday, it sold a little bit back in. That's MGM. Let's take a look at uh, NKE. It's trying to break up out of that linear regression channel. Pay attention to that 50 SMA. In the 18, let's take a look at AXP. Would like to get a small little reset in American Express to continue higher. We can see that rounded double bottom here or triple bottom, if you want to call it. If this is another double bottom here and the breakout, if we can consolidate here a little bit to continue higher, that would be great in American Express. Let's do um, uh, one more. Let's do Shop and Microsoft. Shop, you can see, is trying to come out of that. Linear regression down channel, does it test the 50 SMA to look up or does it fail the 18 SMA? And last but not least, let's take a look at Microsoft. And Microsoft looks like it's coming to a four, four tops here. This is a very good setup. I'm not saying it has to do it. We do have this little tiny gap in here. Pay attention to it. What I'm going to do is zoom in here to give you a better idea. We have that little tiny gap. We pushed up on Friday. We retested this uh, this candle that brought us down. Does it consolidate to break up and retest this prior annual high that happened in August? We came back in uh, September, couldn't do it. We did it up here, tried again. Here, couldn't make it. Are we trying to come back above? If this breaks, this gives you the expected move to the upside on the weekly. If I take the Fibonacci and I'll anchor him for the five days, we're going to do this on the four-hour I mean, we'll do the two-hour, five-day range. We can see that the this was the Sunday, uh, Monday night low or Sunday in the morning to coming into the Friday. And we'll do this on a gray color scale. So everybody, we edit it. For the weekly, I do gray color. So everybody knows where that level is in relationship to the push high or push low. We come here um, on a daily chart. Push it back on daily, push OK. We can see where the Fibonacci extension is. We'd like to hold the 38.2 Fib in order to continue higher. And if the expected move is higher, we'll look for the 38.50 and eventually the 61.8 expected move to the upside. But we have to pay attention to the 38 here, like the 38 here. Make sure it consolidates to break up because if it falls below the 38, you look for the 50, 61 for a professional gap and it'll fill this gap here. If it breaks up above these annual highs, which is 308, 305, 80 cents, you know, 90 cents, 304, look for the upside of the 23, 38, 50, and 61 to the upside in Microsoft. Let's go back to ES, and we're going to uh, just show it on a daily chart one more time. 
what I want you to pay attention to that we broke out of this uh, linear regression down channel. We had the midpoint right here. We double bottomed here. A very important, we do not fill the gap. If we come back and fall in the range of the 50 simple moving average or the 38.2, pay attention to it to continue higher. And if we break above the 44.72 and the 80 area, look for the 4,500 and 44, 45.24 and eventually the 44.40, which is this area here, which was the annual high on the ES. Hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you in our chat room on Discord, or you can DM me. Take care and enjoy your weekend.